You are listening to the Uninformed States of America podcast with your host, Mike Riley, here on the Young Angels Network. Follow us by going to youngangelsnetwork.org, MikeRileyNow.com, and the USAPodcast.com. All right. Yes, indeed. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, everything in between that, of course, to the Uninformed States of America podcast right here on the Young Angels Network or Young Angels Network. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. How you doing? Welcome to the show. That right there is for you. OK, uh, today is um, Wednesday, January the 6th. And oh, my God. I mean, today is definitely one of the most historical days in the history of this country. And of course, uh, we'll get into all of that before we do. If this is your first time listening to the show, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button. Uh, subscribe, uh, uh, share this with your friends, go on to the usapodcast.com, follow me on social media, uh, leave me a review, and all that kind of cool stuff. Download the app. The app is available in the App Store under the USA Podcast. Okay, I don't want to waste a lot of time tonight. I had to rewrite a lot of the show script because of what happened today. Today we witnessed um, the first attempted coup on the United States of America. I'm going to talk about that and where I think all of that came from in the second and third segment of the show today. But um, we're going to do the first segment first. So uh, uh, in the first segment, I know a lot of people, a a couple weeks ago, I asked a lot of people or I I asked y'all on the show if, you know, if you were going to take this COVID vaccine or if you haven't, if you had any questions about the vaccine, because I know a lot of people in the public had their suspicions about the COVID vaccine, including myself, you know, and it's a, and it's a hot topic. So, um, in the beginning of, of the show today, I did, or or I'm going to play an interview that I did with Dr. Catherine Fuller, uh, that I did a little earlier today. Dr. Dr. Catherine Fuller is an amazing physician. She practices clinical immuno immunology that's a word i cannot say immunology (laughs) allergy and asthma and i asked her some questions about the covid vaccine and my suspicions towards the covid vaccine so it's about a 25 minute interview and then after that we're going to get into all the shit that happened today all right y'all so um uh you can learn more about dr Catherine fuller by going to drfullerallergy.com so with no further ado here is my interview with dr Catherine fuller all right so welcome back ladies and gentlemen like i said Um, You know, we really want to have a conversation concerning uh, the COVID and the COVID vaccine. I know a lot of you out there listening to this have questions about COVID. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to bring in some medical professionals, some people who can give us these answers about the vaccines and about all these other things that that you guys have been asking me and questions that I have as well to give us these answers from a professional standpoint. So on the line with me, I am very excited about this one. On the line with me, I have Dr. Catherine Fuller who is a doctor of clinical, I'm saying this wrong, clinical immunology, (laughs) immunology, (laughs) immunology, clinical immunology, uh, as well as a doctor on uh, allergies. Dr. Fuller, are you there? I am here. Hello, Dr. Fuller. Uh, That's for you. That's our our digital studio audience. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you so much for uh, for coming here to educate us on this. This is really important. So, Dr. Fuller... I'm honored to address these issues. Uh, thank you so much. So, um, real quick, Dr. Fuller, I'm just going to jump right into it. You work with immunology and, and allergies and things kind of concerning the respiratory, uh, the respiratory system and things like that. Can you tell us what are some of the things that you've witnessed firsthand with regards to this virus? Um, has it affected you personally at all? Um, I have been fortunate in that I have not had it. Um, I had a patient uh, who um, was the first uh, patient admitted to the ICU, Mm. uh, St. John's, uh, here in uh, Santa Monica. She did beautifully. I've had a number of patients patients who've had it. Oh, wow. Um, Some who did well, some who did poorly. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have a friend who's... 50-year-old twin brother has been intubated uh, at Big County, and uh, he is just now coming off the ventilator after five days. Oh, my God. So it is, it's really affected us, and uh, dealing with the um, 
the shutdown has been difficult, uh, and isolation has been difficult, and I must say that if I didn't have an office to go to, I think I'd go mad. You, you and me both. You and me both. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. by the grace of God, I have an, I have an office I can go to. Um, yeah. So I completely understand what you're saying. You know, um, and, and like you said, you, you've been dealing with, with some of your patients who have who have uh, who have caught this disease and who have had to, had to deal with it. Now, a lot of people are so anxious to get back to normal, um, you know, and and with the rollout of the vaccine, I think a lot of people are looking at it like that's the hope. But let me ask you, you know, working in, in the healthcare industry. What are some of the things that you've heard from people with regards to this vaccine? You know, uh, some people have all these wild claims. There's a lot of, you know, uh, conspiracy theories, a lot of misinformation out there. What are some of the claims that you've heard and what are some of the things people are saying? And and, and would you think that some of these claims are, are rather ridiculous? Well, you know, I don't want to use the word ridiculous unless it's a conspiracy therapy. People are frightened. Right. People are terrified and uh when in an anxious state like that you you are much more easily uh influenced by misinformation um and you know with the information silos uh we in this country find ourselves um it's not surprising that there are these that there are these uh frightening theories out there but there's a couple of key messages that I want to make really clear mm-hmm. about the COVID vaccine, okay? It has been rigorously tested. And people will then say, but it went so fast. Mm-hmm. I say, it's amazing and it's fabulous. The technology is not new. It has been studied uh, for the last 10 years. They've done studies uh, using this for Zika uh, rabies, and even cancer vaccine. Um, they have not been able, really, until now, to figure out the, the, the final step of making this vaccine work, uh, which is to get it into, uh, into the body and it not be digested. But um, it does not have a live virus. And it does not carry a risk of causing disease in the vaccinated person. Okay. Um, okay. The vi- the messenger mRNA mRNA never enters the nucleus of the cell, and it does not affect or interact with the person's DNA. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. No chance you're going to get this. Okay. Uh, you're not going to get COVID nineteen from the vaccination. Mm-hmm. The technology. Uh, has been studied for the last 10 years. If you look back to the history of it, it's rather exciting how it, how it came to be. But uh, they finally figured out how to protect the messenger mRNA so that it can go into the body and not be digested. And the technology that had come before that, they were able to ramp up the production of this so much um, it's it's really incredible. And the other thing is it's going to help us as the next pandemic comes. We're right. going to be ramped up. Right, this right. Is, this is a beautiful thing. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you know, a lot of my friends, a lot of my listeners, a lot of my peers, um, they have their skepticisms when it comes to this virus. Some of them are kind of, like I said, in the in the, in the the conspiracy theory crowd, but a lot of other people, a lot of my friends, like I or, or a lot of people of color, a lot of my friends who are people of color, they they have these concerns based upon things from a historical standpoint, like the Tuskegee syphilis experiments, or um, the there was the uh, I want to say it was in 1976, I think Gerald Ford, the Ford administration ended up having to uh, develop a, a vaccine for a uh, for a swine flu that was going on, and then I think a few years later, those who took the vaccine ended up coming down with a. Uh, some sort of disorder, Guyan bar bar syndrome or something like that. But, uh, and and a lot of people cite those as their concerns. Do you feel like these are legitimate concerns when it comes to, to this vaccine? I think any concern that anybody have is legitimate and should be addressed. Mm -hmm. The first we'll take Tuskegee. Um, it was callous. It was tragic. It was incomprehensible. 
It was reprehensible. And from 1932 to 1972, this experiment went on. And it, when penicillin became available in 47 to treat this thing, they were not treated. These 600 men were not treated. Right. Unbelievable. And not until 1997 did President Clinton apologize for it. Yep. It is a stain, and the stain brings up powerlessness. Mm -hmm. I would say to those who have that concern, that mistrust, I would say to you that by getting your COVID vaccine, you are empowering yourself. And I, I would hope that in any way I could help people um, come to terms with their fears and to be able to move forward. Right. Um, I really would. I, I just, um, I'm 62 years old, and I only knew about the Tuskegee Airmen until I was about 40. Oh, and then... Yeah. I later learned about this experiment mm -hmm. and just goes to show you the, how poorly the education system is. Oh yeah. Is. Oh yeah. And, and how, you know, I'm an educated person mm -hmm. and I didn't know about this in 1972 when it was stopped. Yeah. Um, and I, I can understand, I mean, I should have been, I should have been taught that, but I wasn't. And of course, that that just speaks to the distrust. And I think that many strides have been made in the medical community with regard to uh, encouraging people of color to become a part of the community. And um, and you know, just I'm I and many physicians of color are really working hard to convince. Um, to convince other people of color. Mm -hmm. And I am so in support of this. I really am. Right. I've taken my first vaccine. Yeah, so you've taken the vaccine, huh? I have taken my first dose. You took your the first Pfizer dose, right. vaccine mm -hmm. on the 17th of December. Oh, okay. And how does this I work? It works in two no doses. no reaction whatsoever. Okay. And tomorrow morning uh, at 11 o'clock, I'm going for my second vaccine. Oh, at right. At day 21. But Absolutely. Who's so... And, so you're not growing uh, any extra limbs or anything like that from taking the vaccine? Uh, no, <laughs> everything, everything's fine. Okay. Um, I'm very excited to get the second dose. Um, we had one of our staff members uh, exposed, and mm. so it, it just speaks to how important it is to get this done. Mm -hmm. The rollout, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, well, horrible. Just, horrible. 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 Poorly managed. Horrible. Uh, you and, know what? I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. You know, I, I the the rapidity with which this thing was developed is is just fascinating and a gift. And the funding was put to that. But the federal government uh kicked the distribution out to the state and local government. Yeah. The state and local governments are a underfunded and be overwhelmed mm -hmm. and this this thing uh, I'm hopeful that in the new administration uh, the uh, focus will be uh, on getting this thing out as quickly as possible uh, many physicians once they've had the vaccine are uh, going to volunteer to give it um, I'm working as hard as I can to find links where other physicians can get the vaccine, it's been very difficult. Oh man, that is that is so unfortunate. The, the primary care doctors who are not hospital based are having difficulty getting yeah. it. Ambulance truck drivers are having uh, difficulty getting it. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna get we're gonna do this. Yeah, we are yeah. gonna do this. Absolutely, I think so too. I have I, I I'm a little more optimistic towards the future. Uh, uh, f because we have a new administration coming in that I think is a little more competent when it comes to things like this. But let me ask you about the rollout a little bit. 
you know, a lot. One of my friends is a teacher. My sister is a teacher, um, uh, and they still have to go to school uh, to teach during this time. And uh, you know, they're they're worried about not being able to get the vaccine. What do you think should be the rollout of of those who were able to get it first? I mean, should we be treating those in the medical community first, and then our elderly, and then those who are you know so called essential workers? Who are put in you know, this, this is this is a really tough question, mm-hmm. and it has become a real political football. Right. Um, clearly, you know, it, right medically, you know, people who are respiratory therapists and nurses and doctors and ward secretaries, um, they are at the top of the list. Okay, um, and then I think that should include. Uh, people, ancillary people like uh, firemen and paramedics. I think that uh, you should begin to be vaccinating the people in the nursing homes. It's been, it's been, the rollout there has been very chaotic. Uh, Many of the staff there are afraid to take it. Uh, It's very difficult to get consent. Uh Hello? think that essential workers to me um certainly teachers i have a number of friends that are teachers and uh they haven't gotten it yet uh i think they should be right up there um i also think that we're going to need to bring in a a, a federal aspect to this and to uh if necessary, get the National Guard to bring the vaccines and then to set up tents with all volunteer uh, health professionals who are trained in uh, giving a vaccine. Right. It takes a while to train somebody up to give one. Yeah, and that's, yeah. That, it's not, this is not easy. Yeah, it's, not, it's, not, it's not, not like a, just a simple one, two, three process, right? Where I just It's not like getting a flu shot where I just walk into a CVS they they dab some alcohol on my on, on my arm and just shoot me up and send me on my way right it's not like yeah well it's it's um it's pretty complicated right and uh you but it's not it's not something that's impossible um it's just mainly the logistics of you know getting uh, at the hospitals the staff should be working taking care of people in the ICU and on the floors mm-hmm. and. Volunteers need to come in and relieve the nursing staff from that and come in and give those shots. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, this we've done it before with smallpox. Mm-hmm. We've done it for measles. For measles. We've done it for polio. Yeah. I mean, we can do it. Yeah. I, I always tell people there's a reason why a lot of those in, uh, uh, endemic uh, diseases aren't really around or as prevalent as they used to be. You know, there's not a lot of polio. There's not a lot of smallpox around anymore or, or bubonic plague or anything like that. And it's because of these vaccines we developed. But Well, and they're, they're a blessing. They really yeah. are a blessing. Yeah, absolutely. But, I mean, a lot of people who are skeptical about taking the vaccine or who are afraid of taking the vaccine or who have their doubts about the virus and everything else like that, I hear a lot of people talk about herd immunity a lot. Um, a lot of people think that's the best remedy to actually take down the virus versus taking the vaccine. What are your feelings on, on herd immunity? I think it's, I mean, I don't know a lot about viruses, but that's the way viruses mutate, right? <laughs> um, here you go. In order to achieve 70% herd immunity in this country, mm-hmm. that would require hundreds of thousands of people to have to have been infected with the virus which is going to lead to hundreds of thousands of deaths right in order to get to 70 percent there's going to be a lot of carnage and it's just not it's just really not um if you are scientifically minded it is not um it is not a legitimate uh plan of action to take eventually we will have hit it with the vaccines and this is going to take a while right um so Hmm. it yes it is going to take a while and that behooves us to not have pandemic fatigue 
yeah. and let down our guard. Yeah, I, I must, completely agree. We must keep it up, and we have to encourage each other to be able to do it. Yeah, yeah. It's going to take all of us. Yeah. yeah, we're all in this together. I tell people that all the time. Uh, you know, uh, us being all on the same page, I think, makes a huge difference for actually mitigating this virus. I think a lot of other countries like New Zealand and Vietnam and South Korea, they were able to curb their viruses a little bit more than we did here in this country. Um, to me, it's because they were all on the same page and they had and they all had the same goal. Um, what do you think? You know, they you know, they're they're doing their their vaccinations as well. But, you know, I, I was watching uh, this thing about New Zealand the other day. There were a bunch of people at a, at a soccer game, a stadium. Oh, full. I just love New Zealand. <laughs> that president of New Zealand. She, she is wonderful. Uh, she's, she's the best. <laughs> she's, she, um, yeah, she's wonderful. She's the best. They have. Well, first of all, they're an island. Right. Right. And they're an island with a robust public health. Um, department set up. They are they are on top of it, and people there uh, could see that the government was acting very clearly and sending out very clear messages. Unlike that which unfortunately occurred in this country. Right. Right. The other thing um, is that if you look at um, this culture, this American culture, there's this um, streak of independence. And what I think is, I, I'm fine with with independence, but it's this toxic um, uh, manifestation. And if you look in uh, cultures that are more uh, working together, many of the Asian cultures are much more collaborative. Yes. Um, they, we're not collaborative. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I we're agree. just not. Yeah. And um, one of the things I am looking forward to seeing in the future is um, as we walk down the street um, and it's flu season and there's no more COVID, my hope is that people are choosing to wear the mask to prevent future uh, influenza uh, epidemics. Mm -hmm. This is, a, it's got to be a way of thinking that is incorporated into our society. Given the, given the extreme polarization of this, um, I think that's going to be a long time coming. But yeah, yeah, unfortunately. We're going to get better. We, right. We're going to get better. And right. I would say to the communities of color that it's not really been we're all in, in this together. The people of color have, have they're just, the deck is stacked against them in so many mm -hmm. ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's, let's just tell it like it is. Yeah. And I feel passionate that... Uh, the people in these communities, if you talk about order of vaccinations, I feel that these groups, you know, should be should be at the top of the list. Mm -hmm. I have volunteered on uh, the Navajo reservation and the vulnerability and the just lack of uh, health care on the reservations. Unbelievable. I think that... Uh, the um, the vaccine should be made readily available um, to the to these underserved and disadvantaged communities. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. Especially because a lot of them are the ones who are getting hit by the disease the hardest. You exactly. Know, you know, I mean, the, these are the people. You know, these mm -hmm. are the people that are suffering the most. Mm -hmm. And not only are they a, a high risk group, they are a group that is is really suffering. Yeah, and it, it's just so it's so critical that we can encourage uh, members of this pop, of this population um, that when the vaccine does become available, that there is great acceptance. And right. I will do everything I possibly can. I will answer any question. I will speak with anyone. That is amazing. Well. 
Dr. Fuller, I have I just have one last question for you. I mean, I can sit here and talk to you about this all day. I, I love how much I'm learning here. Um, but my last question for you, Dr. Fuller, is, is, is as a medical professional, what's the one thing you would advise people on with regards to this virus and to this vaccine? Um, number one, take the vaccine as soon as you can. Right. Number two, don't let the fear rule your emotions. Humans, um, humans get angry, they get frustrated, they let their guard down. And so I would say to continue uh, to isolate to protect others, to wear a mask and show them that you respect them. Right, yes. And that it's important for us who do wear masks not to infuriate those who choose not to. Hmm. The best thing we can do is be a good example. And I just, the, we have to tone down the anger. Right. And... Uh, and for those of us who will choose to vaccinate and who do believe in wearing masks, I think those people are the other people are pretty much out of control, <laughs> and the, therefore the onus is on us to try to bring some peace to this. Um, I don't know how to you know make that happen, but I think it's important for us not to let our frustration uh, with the with the group that doesn't seem to understand this, get out of, get out of here. We yeah. just need to keep our, keep your eyes on the prize. We're going to get through this. Absolutely. Well, I and don't let them antagonize you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? That, those are some good words of advice for me because I have to kind of keep my cool when I see people walking around without mask on and who are doing things like that. Like you said, I think the best thing for us to do would be to lead by example. So, um, Absolutely. Well, Dr. Fuller, thank you so much for coming here and blessing us. Uh, God bless you for what you do. We would love to have you back sometime, if that's okay, um, as we go through I, this. I thing. am honored and thrilled to uh, have been a part of this. And oh, thank you so I'm much. available. Absolutely. And uh, again, everybody out there, good luck. Take care of yourself. Take care of others. Take advantage of the vaccine. Absolutely. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better myself. Well, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Catherine Fuller. Thank you so much. God bless you for what you do. Thank you. Thank you. You are listening to the Uninformed States of America podcast with your host, Mike Riley, here on the Young Angels Network. Follow us by going to youngangelsnetwork.org, MikeRileyNow.com, and the USAPodcast.com.